Well, the rain's finally here. Seems like, depending on who we are, we see rain as different things. But today it's pouring. Boy, do we need the rain. You know, when I used to be a race car driver, we would, oh, we would pray against the rain. Because if the rain came, then we wouldn't be able to race cars. Of course, our farmers are always praying for rain. Not too much, just the right amount. At the racetrack, if it ever rained us out, we would say something like, oh, I guess the farmers prayed harder than we did this time. I don't think any of us would argue that we have really needed the rain, though. The Bible talks a lot about rain in a variety of places, in a variety of ways. God's people have been through droughts before. They've been through difficult situations, hardships that the Bible sometimes referred to as droughts. And then God shows up with the rain. There's an incredible story in the Old Testament about a prophet who, who actually prays for a drought. He prays against the rain as a, as a way to draw God's people back to God. And then when God's people have been sufficiently drawn back to him, when God's people have gotten on their knees and began to worship God once again, the prophet prays for rain and God just releases the rain. The drought is over. The rain has come. This pandemic has been a bit of a, a drought, hasn't it? There's a lot of things that has put us at odds with one another and even odds with our Savior sometimes. <laughs> we don't understand, why, God, are you doing this thing? Why have you chosen to put me through this thing? For some of us, it's our businesses. Some of us have not been able to bring a paycheck home. It's just created a hardship. It's created a season where it feels like a drought, and we just keep praying, God, where's the rain? God, bring the rain. God, sustain us. God, nourish us. And, and for us... <laughs> We think that's rain. The way that God answers that prayer is by bringing us rain. Because we have it in our mind. This is what we want. We're praying for this thing. This is what's going to answer all our problems. Right now in the, in the pandemic, I've been praying a lot for a, a cure, for a, something that's going to eliminate this virus. But maybe that's not the way God's going to answer that prayer. There's this story in the book of Acts, chapter 14, where Paul and Barnabas go into these cities called um, Derby and Lystra. And when they're there, they do a healing. And the people of these cities think that Paul and Barnabas are actually gods, gods in the body of men. And the people begin to worship them. And, and Paul and Barnabas, they want nothing to do with it. They don't want to be worshipped. I mean, they don't want people singing their name in a worship song. They don't want people thinking that they're God. They don't want to take any of the credit for what for God, Almighty God has been doing in their lives and in their ministry. And so they, they tear their clothes. They say, stop. No, that's not who we are. And they try to present a case to say, look, God has always been with you. You know, you can't do this. And, and they say in, in, uh, in, in chapter 14, verse 16, it says, in earlier days, God permitted all the nations to go their own ways, but he never left himself without a witness. There were always his reminders, such as sending you rain, and good crops and giving you food and joyful hearts. And that's what I want to say. I want to stop right there. There's more story, but I want you to check it out in Acts chapter 14 if you want to, to read more. <laughs> God never left himself without a witness. Even in the Old Testament, even in the oldest of days, even in the worst of scenarios, God never lets himself without a witness. And Paul and Barnabas name a few things. Sending you rain. Giving you good crops. Giving you food and joyful hearts, those are part of the witness that is God. And, and what is a witness? A witness is someone or something that tells a story about what they've seen. It, it bears witness. And if you're a, a witness in a court of law, if you get called to, the, to testify, you are, are telling about something that you've seen. You're bearing witness to something. And, and so a joyful heart, good crops, rain, those are... <laughs> Those are bearing witness to a good God that's out there. And so while the thing that I pray for is God bear witness to me by doing exactly what I want, when I want it, in my timeline, exactly how I want it, maybe God's saying, look, 
You've been praying for this thing, but I'm not leaving you without a witness. My plan right now isn't for that thing. My plan is to send you joyful hearts and food and rain and good crops, and that's going to bear witness to me. And so if you have food, if you have rain, if you have good crops, if you have a joyful heart, know that that is a gift from me. Use those gifts to bear witness to my goodness in the midst of a hardship. Make no mistake. This pandemic is an extended hardship. And it is making people so stressed out, so full of anxiety, so anxious that they are doing and saying things that they would not normally do. And we talked about that this past week in our Sunday sermon a bit. Let us not forget the context that we are all in. And some of us bear that better than others. I don't know what you're praying for right now, friends. I don't know if there's a relational thing that's going on in your life. It's a financial burden. I don't know if you're so moved by the division and the polarization in our nation. I, I don't I don't know what it is you pray for. Maybe it's that you're praying for a cure to this virus. I say keep praying for it. I say keep asking. Jesus tells us, man, we just got to keep knocking on that door. God is home. Keep knocking at the door. So let's keep praying for it. But let's not ignore the fact that God never leaves himself without a witness. And so... Days like this, where the rain is pouring down, where these beautiful flowers are being watered, where where that corn is being watered and that crop is saved because there is now rain falling from the sky. Let us not forget the goodness of God in the midst of a hard time with the little things like rain, like food, good crops, and joyful hearts. My prayer for you today, my prayer for you this week, is that you would find joyful hearts that bear witness to the goodness of God, even in the most difficult of times. And that, my friends, oh, that is something that we can be unified around. That is something that can heal this world. Have a great day.